job here as a veterinarian at the aquarium is to make sure all the animals are, are healthy and well taken care of. That includes treating them if they're sick and making sure they eat right. A veterinarian is someone who practices medicine, that is, uh, does the medical care of animals. In the zoo, we work on birds, we work on reptiles, mammals, we work on fish. You have to be able to actually look at the animals and determine what's going on because they can't tell you what's wrong with them. I think the thing that is most important is we care for the animals, but we should care about the animals too. It's very important that children from the earliest age develop caring attitudes about animals and nature, the environment that all of us live in. Do you know what environment means? The environment is something you are very familiar with. It's everything that makes up our surroundings and affects our ability to live on Earth such as the air we breathe, the water that covers most of the Earth's surface, and the plants and animals around us. Since some animals' environments are very different from our own, like a shark, turtle, or a whale, veterinarians have to use special equipment so they can breathe and stay warm in this environment. To do anything here with any of the animals, we need a good team. Some of the whales weigh several thousand pounds, so to be able to even look in their mouth and make sure they, their teeth are healthy or anything like that, we need a team of people. Besides teamwork, another important skill veterinarians use when working with animals is math. Math skills are extremely important in my job. We use them every day. Um, we need to know how much medicine we give to an animal if it isn't feeling good. We need to know how much they need to eat. Writing skills are very important. We have to write uh, medical records. We have to write reports. Uh, we have to communicate with a variety of people about the care of our animals. Veterinarians work with all kinds of animals and in many different environments. Some work with animals at the aquarium, in zoos, or even from this building the animal hospital. His respirations are about at 50. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a veterinarian? I love my job. I have the best job in the world as far as I'm concerned. Um, I love going to work every day, uh, working with animals, working with my staff. It's a wonderful job. A lot of the same equipment doctors use to keep us healthy, veterinarians use to make our pets healthy. This one takes pictures of the inside of your pet. This machine monitors your pet's heart rate. And veterinarians use this special machine to look inside of a mother whale to check on the health of her baby. And just like doctors, veterinarians have many patients. Hi, my name is Matthew and I'm eight and this is my dog Rocky. He's three. The reason I'm here today is for Rocky's wellness exam and to learn how to become a veterinary when I grow up. What I thought we'd do here today, Matthew, is uh, do Rocky's wellness exam and you can assist me. And while we're doing this, uh, you can ask me any questions. How does that sound? Okay. Great. Do you have any questions before we start? How old were you when you wanted to become a veterinarian? Oh gosh, um, I wanted to be a veterinarian since the time I was a very little girl, since I can remember, since I could say Blue, my first cat's name. Matthew, are you studying animals in school now? Yes, in science class. That's great. That's how I got started learning about animals is in science class in school. And when I wasn't learning about animals in science class, I was at the library learning about them from books. I wanted to learn as much about all the different birds, fish, and mammals as I could. What they ate, what environments they lived in, and how big they were. Science is another very important subject for veterinarians to know. Veterinarians use science to figure out what's wrong with their patients and to determine what medications to use to make their patients feel better. 
Many of the same tools that you have in your classroom to help you learn about science, like microscopes and scales, veterinarians use to help their patients stay healthy. Matthew, who takes care of Rocky the most? I do. That's great. What kind of dog is Rocky? He's a corgi. Wow, he's a beautiful dog. Where did you get Rocky? We adopted him from the pound. My mom believes that adopting a dog from the pound is a great way to have a pet. I agree. There's so many homeless animals who need homes. I think getting your dog from the pound is a great way to get a pet. When does Rocky get fed? In the morning and at night. That's perfect. That's just right. How much exercise does Rocky get? Well, I walk him in the morning. My brother walks him when he gets home for lunch. And I walk him when I get home from school. That's very good. Dogs need exercise just like people, just like you and I. Well, it sounds like you're doing a real good job with Rocky. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to give Rocky his physical exam. We're going to check his eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and his whole body. But before we do that, we're going to wash our hands so they're as germ-free as possible. Well, it sounds like you're doing a real good job with Rocky. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to give Rocky his physical exam. We're going to check his eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and his whole body. But before we do that, we're going to wash our hands so they're as germ-free as possible. Do you know what a germ is? A germ is something very tiny that causes a disease. Germs are so tiny that you can't see them without the use of a very powerful microscope. Germs exist in several shapes and are sometimes the cause of many diseases. And germs can make people and animals sick. That's why it's always important to wash your hands because the fewer germs you have on them, the less chance you have of getting sick or making someone around you sick. There are diseases that can be shared between humans and animals. Sometimes we see the apes here get colds from us. Those types of illnesses exist in a lot of different animals, so it's important to wash your hands between contacting animals and after petting any animal. And hold on to this part. And go ahead and put your stethoscope right here so you can listen to Rocky's heart. A stethoscope makes it easier for the veterinarian to hear your pet's heartbeat. You may recognize it from a visit to your family doctor. A good healthy beat like this tells the veterinarian that Rocky's heart is fine. Sounds like a nice strong heart. Okay, great. And if you could hand me my chart over there, Matthew. We'll write down go. that Rocky has a nice, strong heart. Now we're going to check Rocky's eyes, ears, and nose, and mouth. What are we looking for? We're looking for anything abnormal, any redness, any swelling, anything that might be a sign that Rocky isn't well. And we have to do that for Rocky's entire anatomy. Do you know what anatomy means? Anatomy is the body of a person, plant, or animal. The anatomy of many animals is a lot like our own anatomy. Just like us, many animals have a brain, a spinal cord, lungs, and a heart. When a veterinarian gives an animal a physical exam, it's very important that he or she knows a lot about that animal's anatomy. Rocky's ears look great. We want to look at the teeth and make sure they're white and shiny and it doesn't look like we have any cavities. And we're going to check in his eyes to make sure his eyes are nice and clear. Great. Going to check his legs, look at his paws, make sure his nails aren't too long. Very good. Besides dogs, veterinarians have many different kinds of patients including tigers, giraffes, turtles, orangutans, polar bears, elephants, fish, and just about every other animal known. Well, it looks like Rocky's in great shape. I'm just going to make a few notes on his record here about the things that we saw today. Did you have any other questions? 
How did you become a veterinarian? Well, it's like I was saying earlier, it starts in school. You really have to always try your hardest, especially in grade school. I really first started uh, trying to become a veterinarian there, learning about uh, science and math and reading and writing. Once you complete grade school, the next step in becoming a veterinarian is high school. After you graduate high school, you have four years of college. And finally, to become a doctor of veterinarian medicine, you have to go to a special college for another four years. So all together, Matthew, it's eight years of college to become a veterinarian. It's really a lot of hard work, but it's really worth it. Excuse me, Dr. Gia. Yes, Shannon. Mr. Sam Shepard just called, and his dog Barney is having tremendous difficulty breathing, so I told him to come right over. This is the information he gave me and his chart. Okay, very, very good. Thank you, Shannon. Let's get ready. Matthew, would you like to prep with us? Sure. Okay, let's go. Good boy, Barney. Good boy. Let's see what do we've got going on over here. All right, I think we're going to need to look in his mouth. I've got the laryngoscope. Shannon, can you open? Matthew, keep him from wiggling. Oh, gosh, I think I see the problem here. Matthew, can you come over here and hand me those forceps? Thank you. Okay. Here's the trouble. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, look at that. No wonder you couldn't breathe so well, Barney. Oh, my goodness. Let's take a look at you. Are you okay? Well, oh, you're breathing a lot better. Barney! When I get to send an animal home, he came in sick and he's now feeling better. It's the best feeling in the world. It's the most wonderful part of my job. Boy, it seems like Barney's feeling a lot better now. So why was it so hard for Barney to breathe? Well, it looked like Barney chewed up one of his toys a little bit too small and got it stuck in his throat. I'm going to give you a toy that's a little bit harder to chew, a little more indestructible. Thanks. You're welcome. So, Matthew, after giving Rocky his wellness exam and saving another dog's life today, what do you think it takes to become a veterinarian? Well, science is really important. And you have to know about all different kinds of animals and their environment. Math also comes in handy to figure out how much medicine to give a patient. It is also important to have really good reading and writing skills so you can learn about your patients and tell other people about them. And most importantly, it's never too early to begin to prepare. Well, that's right. You're off to a pretty good start, Matthew. And remember, one of the best places to start is with taking care of your own pet, learning how to feed him, walk him, take care of him, knowing if he's sick or well, and asking your mom to call me if there's any problems. That's really important. What are some things you can do right now to start preparing to become a veterinarian? Come on, Rocky, let's go home. Are there skills that you're learning in school that veterinarians use in their job every day? Thanks for all your help, Dr. Gia. It was my pleasure, Matthew. Veterinarians are very important people in our community. Not only do they make it possible for us to see some of our favorite animals up close, but they keep and make our family pets healthy as well. What do you want to be when you grow up?